A Buddha is a person that one has taken a bodhisattva vow and renounces the uh, enlightenment even though he could get it in that lifetime. He renounces it. And he goes and he uh, purifies all of his, they call them parami, all of his good uh, qualities. That's patience and and loving kindness and um, all kinds of different things like that. And he purifies them. He goes around now there's actually three kinds of Buddha. One Buddha is called uh, a moral Buddha and one is an energetic Buddha and one is an intelligent Buddha. That doesn't mean that all of them aren't moral and energetic and intelligent. They just differentiate between the three. To become a moral Buddha that means that you have to go around the wheel of samsara for 16 mahakapas. Now, a mahakapa is one complete cycle of the expansion and contraction of the universe. <laughs> one complete cycle of the expansion and contraction of the universe. Now, there's a thing called an asankaya, and this is a fourth of that. The universe is still for one asankaya. Now, they, the Buddhists have tried to put this into numbers to give you some kind of an idea. Um, it's uh, 10, with a, 10 to the 160th power. That's how many years it takes, that they're, they're just sitting still. Okay, now this is this is when it's all contracted and, and then the Big Bang happens. And then for one Asankaya, there's expansion of the universe. And there that's when life occurs on planets. And then it stops for one Asankaya. And then it contracts for one Asankaya. So we're talking about 10 to the 540th power years for one. Now, um, a moral Buddha does that for 16 of those. He, he told them. He, he didn't say the numbers, but, but he, he did say that this is these, there are these kind of Buddhas, and he, he even named some of them. We saw him in the past. Now, they purify themselves a lot and they go through lifetime after lifetime. And one of the things about a bodhisattva is when they're reborn into a heavenly realm, they don't want to be there anymore. So quite often they're reborn into the Devaloka. In the Devaloka, you have to eat food. You have to take some kind of sustenance every day or you die and then you're reborn in another realm. Or if you're born in the Brahma Loka from doing meditation, your food is joy. So you cut off the joy and then you die out of that realm and reborn in another realm. They always want to be reborn in the human realm as much as they possibly can. That's where they can purify themselves the most. Now, they keep on being reborn over and over and over and over millions and millions and millions of times, purifying themselves by their actions and their deeds and their speech until finally they've purified enough and then they can be reborn into the human realm and be a Buddha. Now, when a, when a moral Buddha is born, the lifespan of human beings is a lot longer than it is right now. It's more like a hundred thousand years. And he doesn't give any, quote, Dhamma teaching to people. They become enlightened just by seeing his example. He doesn't, he, he might give two or three teachings in his entire life. 
and these are the Buddhas that don't uh, they have monks that follow them but they're all so pure that they don't give the Vinaya rules so as soon as a Buddha dies then the Buddha uh, era starts to fade away very quickly but it's been around for a hundred thousand years or so so it's been around for a long time the next kind of Buddha is called the energetic Buddha and he is uh, he's a bodhisattva for eight Mahakapas one at one expansion and contraction of the universe And when he's born, he is uh, about the the lifespan of human beings is, is corroded and is down to about fifteen or twenty thousand years, something like that. And whether I really believe these these lifespans or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so don't. I have read it in the text, but I'm I I have my doubts still. So. I'm just reporting what I've read. No. He's an intelligent Buddha. That's right. Right. The reason he's called an intelligent Buddha is he only he he got to become a Buddha after only four Mahakapas. Yeah, he was exceptional. He was very intelligent. He worked very hard. And as a result, he was born during a time when the lifespan is not very long and he didn't live very long. But he gave the, he gave the rules to the monks. And that helps the, uh, the Buddha's teaching stay around for a lot longer because of the discipline that the monks have to keep. And it said that it'll, the Buddha Dhamma will last about 5,000 years. So we're about halfway through. Are you impatient? Now, the reason that the Buddha is such an incredible being is because they have purified themselves for such a long time. They are, it's, it's like you take a, a bottle and you wash it out and it was, there's, you smell the inside of the bottle and there's no odor at all. Now an arahat is someone that can attain arahat ship in this lifetime they haven't worked so much on purifying themselves like the Buddhas do. To be a first chief disciple or second chief disciple like Sariputta, he made the determination during one Buddha and the next Buddha that came around, he, uh, he purified himself enough to become the first chief disciple. Um, they generally, the first chief disciple purifies himself for two Mahakapas. And the second chief disciple is a little bit less than that, but not much. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't really think about it much. I figure that I don't want to be a Buddha. It takes too long. It's too hard. I mean, they get killed so many times and, and have to hold their mind so that there's not one ounce of dissatisfaction. So taking a bodhisattva vow, to me, uh, no way. Let me get off the wheel right now. I, we got the Buddha's teaching. All we have to do is practice the way he says, and we can do it. Yeah. 
a lot of people a lot of people will take a bodhisattva vow and after five or ten or twenty thousand lifetimes they realize hey this is tough I don't want to do that anymore and they give it up see uh, uh, I don't think I think this is a commentary too so I'm not sure that it's absolutely correct but there's eight things that have to occur in order for you to become a bodhisattva. One of the things is that you have to have the potential to be an arahat right now and renounce it. You have to uh, be willing to die for the Buddha. You have to um, Take the Bodhisattva vow in front of the Buddha and the Buddha has to look into the future to see whether in fact you are going to be a Buddha or not. You have to have psychic powers, all, all fly in the air and all that kind of stuff. I can't remember the rest. Yeah. Well, but to be a Buddha is, is not a, an easy thing. You, you have to be willing. You, yeah, and do that in front of in front of the Buddha. But you have to have all of these these abilities and just say, no, I don't want to do that. I'll give it up. Yeah, something like that. No. The Buddha doesn't look at those kind of things at all. Yeah. But he he rejected he rejected a lot of different kinds of questions because they were only speculation and that's all. And that's what a belief in God is. It's a it's a speculation. It's a concept and we're dealing with reality. Yeah.